Hi SciFest, welcome to Sunai Base, the South African Antarctic Base. My name is Pierre Tief and I am the S59 radar engineer. Hi, my name is Urani Manuka, you can call me Uri. I'm the S59 VLF engineer, also known as Space Weather Engineer. I hold a degree of Bachelor's of Science in Electronic Engineering from the University of Pasunata. And I grew up in Stellenbosch and I also obtained my Bachelor's of Engineering in Electronics at Stellenbosch University. In this video, we're going to show you some of our instruments and our life is like in Antarctica. Our base is divided into three blocks. That's block A, block B and block C. Welcome to C block. We start our tour in our gym. We have everything we need here. We have a climbing wall, we have a punching bag, we have a bicycle, we have a rowing bench and a treadmill. We have weights, but the best of all, we have a bride, which uh, you'll have to use your imagination a little bit to see how that's going to work. But during takeover, this is the place to be. We also have some storerooms where anything you might need, you'll find. If you want to warm up a little bit, we have a nice sauna and you can relax. And coming through here, we go to the hangar. As you can see behind me, we have many snowmobiles, but here in Antarctica, we don't call them snowmobiles, we call them skidoos. So we have many skidoos, and the mechanics are currently servicing them and getting them ready for takeover. This is our emergency generator, generator number three. The two main generators are in the generator room. We'll go there next. and we're going into B block and in between the blocks we have things called links right so this is BC link and here we have the games room right where all the fun happens table tennis table pool table we have darts so here is our bar this is Chugi Inn you can come have a drink with us when you come and visit here we have the dry store where we keep all our food during the year this is like checkers but you just don't have to pay we have everything here filter coffee Pasta, spices, sauces, milk, biscuits, chips, chocolates. I mean, we have everything we can, we need, right? Okay, a lot of people want to know, what do we do with all our waste? Well, we have a waste room. And in here, we separate metal, glass, plastic, food. We have a compactor where we put all our plastic things inside and it crushes it into a manageable size block. We have a bin where we dispose of glass. All our glass comes in here and gets crushed. We have a rudimentary yet functional can crushing device. We have these uh, oil drums that we use. We cut them open, store everything, and once we're done, we seal them up. And this goes back to South Africa. Well, you saw the dry store. This is the coal store. We still have some carrots and we still have some veggies left over. The temperature in here is usually about two or three degrees, and in here is like a big freezer. Here we keep all our meats, everything that needs to remain frozen, and the temperature in here is usually about minus 10 or so. We all take turns to cook. Tonight it's Tulani's turn. So, this is our kitchen, and Tulani is busy preparing a nice meal for us. <laughs> So whenever we cook, we need to cook for nine people, all right? We have a main chef and then one person assisting. This is our dining room. In the dining room, we have a screen that monitors some of the instruments so that while you are having a bite, you can always keep one eye on your instruments to make sure everything is running fine. And we find ourselves in AB Link. Now we start getting the offices. Our comms engineer sits inside here where he's got access to HF radios, VHF radios, UHF radios, GPSs, all things comms related. 
is handled inside here. I think you can come inside quickly. So we have VHF, UHF, and HF radios, and lots of testing equipment. So this is also where we go outside. Each link has a big door, and this is our main entrance and exit to the base. Now today, the wind's about 30 knots, and the temperature is about minus 28, minus 29. So if you come outside with me, see we have some, some blowing snow again. Those vehicles there are called the Challengers, that's what we use to do our cut trays. When we transport uh, supplies and waste and all those kinds of things from the base to the shore to be um, either on, uh, loaded onto the ship or offloaded from the ship. We use those vehicles to traverse the ice. Okay, so in terms of accommodation, you know, where we sleep, we have rooms in A block and we have rooms in B block. Currently we're in B block and the rooms here are quite spacious. Two bunk beds, so four, four people in a room in B block. You have your cupboards, you have some drawers under the bed, and then your four beds. So our bathroom's here, this is the B block bathroom. And uh, it's the basics, you have some toilets on the right, you have some showers on the left, and you have your, your mirrors and your basins. So this is the Sunai Cinema, come inside. Here we watch some movies, we watch some series. And, uh, you know, we still do it old school, VHS. Okay, next we're going to check out the hospital. Hi, Abby, can we come inside? You are welcome to come inside. This is Dr. Abby Payton. Hello, everybody. Our team doctor, as well as our team leader, and also a Sunai veteran, S50, S54, S55, S56, and this year, S59. She's, only, only, she's also the only person to have ever done three overwinterings in a row. Insane. Yeah. Pretty insane. I have been taking an X-ray recently, X-ray machine over here, and we've been viewing Pierre's hand. I've got a lovely new digital machine. Moving round to my right is our um, dental facilities. You can see we're pretty well set up there. We also have a nice little sick bay bed, quite a bit of emergency equipment. I have an oxygen cylinder over here. I have an autoclave machine over here. The reason why I need an autoclave machine is because we have our own theater in Sanai, which is right through here. It's reasonably well equipped with all emergency equipment and um, resuscitative equipment. And this is our lab. Oscilloscopes, signal generators, function generators. This is where we service boxes, fix boxes. We do development work. We have instruments running here. So here I service and repair transceiver boxes. I have one here on the bench. And to repair and service these boards, we need test equipment. What we use, we have two oscilloscopes here that we use. We have a signal generator, a DC power supply, a computer running Linux with all the necessary software, and we have a router up here, a switch. So using this testing station, we have the same setup here as we have down there in the radar hut. And this basically simulates the antenna array. So how the radar works? The radar sends a signal out into the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a part of our atmosphere that is charged with particles. And this radar sends out a signal into the ionosphere. It refracts, it bends, it hits some sort of electron density irregularity, some, some strange part in the atmosphere. And from that, it reflects back and gets picked up by the transceiver again. So the transceiver pulses. It first transmits, it waits, and then it receives. So here we have our CTBTO seismic station. This is a system run by the Germans and it's used to measure seismic activity, specific, specifically nuclear explosions. And this device can pick up nuclear explosions anywhere in the world, uh, including earthquakes. And a few months ago it picked up the nuclear explosions uh, in North Korea. So here in this rack we have various types of GPS receivers. What we measure here at Sunai is something called GPS scintillation. So as the signal travels from the GPS satellite in space to your GPS receiver, it passes through the ionosphere and it gets distorted. So we can measure that distortion here and we use that information to improve GPS functionality, especially here in Antarctica, where the signal gets distorted quite a lot because of the ionosphere. Uh, we are back in a block, upper physics lab. 
So we mainly do instrument maintenance uh, that involves uh, fault finding and repairing the systems. That's number one. Number two, on daily basis, uh, we do data analysis. Um, basically, we, we do data review and record events of interest. So number three, um, we do uh, development projects. Uh, by development projects, uh, I mean any project uh, that seeks to improve our current instrument setup as well as uh, data collection, data storage, and data analysis methods. Currently, I'm working uh, on IoT-based framework for our system. This uh, method or system is going to be utilizing uh, the cloud-based data server. Uh, we also have um, antennas for real meter and uh, our VLF systems, uh, as well as uh, magnetometer sensors uh, for all our magnetometer systems. So up there, here has already showed you the radar system. Uh, we also have um, antennas for real meter and uh, our VLF systems. Uh, as well as uh, magnetometer sensors uh, for all our magnetometer systems. Uh, maybe, let me also point out that all our magnetometer sensors are in uh, installed inside the, the hedges. And these hedges are actually buried uh, in snow. Uh, so for you to have access to the, to the sensors, you will have to first dig out or clear out the hardened snow. And uh, if you ask me, um, I can tell you it's, it's quite a hectic job. So basically, on a daily basis, we copy data from all these uh, data logging machines to our main server. Uh, we call our main server Mufasa. That, that server is the one that actually you can have access to all the way from uh, Hermanus. Okay, we find ourselves in A block. So let's have a look and see how's water tested here on the base. Okay, we have Tulani here, our base engineer, and he's going to tell you a little bit about how we test the water here on the base. Uh, here in the lab, uh, we do lab analysis on samples taken from drinking water and samples taken from the wastewater treatment plant. Um, here we test uh, for pH conductivity. Here we test uh, for bacteria, and that's where we weigh the samples. Okay, guys, it's minus 21 and it's 15 knots. And we are at what we call the Smelly, our snow smelter. Where the guys are hard at work, busy digging snow. Because that's where we get all our water from. We get it from snow, right? We melt the snow. That's how we shower, that's how we drink water. And we have a few of our guys uh, that you'll see later as well. Busy filling up the Smelly, right? We've got two big tanks here. Each tank can take about 5,000 kilograms or 5,000 liters. And then we have a big base, uh, a big tank and base as well. That can hold about 37,000 liters. So yeah, whenever we have a drone, we come, we fill up, um, and that provides us with the water we need. We also have a big bulldozer that we use to actually make piles of snow to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to get it in there. So yeah, that's uh, that's our smelly. You can see the base there in the background. We have A block on the far left, B block, C block, and then the helipad. That's where the helicopter lands during takeover. Okay, so here we are in the radar hut, and uh, needless to say, sometimes it gets a little bit cold. We have a UPS here that keeps the radar running for a few minutes at least, and we have some supplies here in case I ever get stuck in a storm and I need to uh, I need to survive for a few days. So I just want to give a special thanks to my buddy Zach from Swords. Zach, 
you can say hi. <laughs> We're on our way back. We're on our way back to base.